Daddy Ho Lions fans, welcome to the Detroit Lions podcast, episode 460. I am your dashing host, Chris, and this is the Detroit Lions offseason kicks off. I'm here with my one of my very, very best friends and co-host, the glorious Jeff the Riz Risden. How are you doing, brother? Chris, it is good to be with you this week. We're in off-season mode. Yes, 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 we're here. Uh, unfortunately, we're in off-season mode, but just how how good do we feel right now, like as a Lions nation, about the way that season ended? It's, it, I, I know, I, <laughs> I, I know we wanted to keep playing, but damn, that was a fun end of the year. <laughs> oh, man, what? This is what being a football fan is supposed to feel like, right? I mean, this is like we have we have paid for years and years, and boy, we're here, we're here, we're here. All right, we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about, Riz. I mean, this season I know ended. We, we still have to talk about the Packers game because we had one final game, and it, it hurts to have that last game a little bit. But we had that last game, and we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about Brad Holmes' press conference because. It's time to climb out of the cave now as the season ends and all the boys go home. We're going to have a little bit of golf talk uh, that arose from some Twitter exchanges that I watched, but I didn't jump into because I didn't. It was good. It was a good enough exchange without me. You let me me be the bullet (laughs) shield there. (laughs) No, but it's it's, it's worth it's it's a it's a worthwhile conversation to have and one that we're going to keep having. But we can sort of, you know, plant some flags and some grounds now. Yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of people talking. I want a Super Bowl. I want to watch my team play. You just won three games last year. You got more wins this year than you 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 expected, and any team would have gotten. We're fine. We're fine. Um, okay, and look, if we've held on this long, we've held on this long. Speaking of held, hi Jeff. Um, one more year is not a big tough deal. All right, so we'll have uh, some golf talk. We've got some head coach vacancies, some Lions staff, uh, both current and past. Who are people of interest in the NFL? So we'll get about that. We'll get around on that. We'll talk draft talk, free agency. We'll have a quick look at that and a whole lot more. There's a long off season. We're about to roll in a little bit of Scott and Jeff and and the coverage we've got. I mean, we've got just a couple of weeks till Senior Bowl hits. There's a lot. There's a ton. I mean, it's like the game stopped, but we've got. I mean, this thing's gonna go until June still, Riz. There's so much. The NFL has made this really something all right we got a great show lined up Riz, are you ready to go my man oh yeah let's do it yeah oh hmm. um yeah let's do it let's do it oh i'm hitting the wrong damn let's button let's do it let's, do it. let's kick this off and break it down <laughs> The, the 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 button for this this screen when <laughs> to start the show and I'm like why is nothing happening <laughs> I keep starting the show <laughs> all right here we go all right uh, Mike is out there and Mike I know you know that's a that's a piece of bait you got at the end of that line there but Cliff Kingsbury for offensive coordinator uh, <laughs> good lord no <laughs> oh, let's first thank Chris me. Beck for subscribing thank you for subscribing to the show anyone who's out there go ahead and feel free to hit the subscribe button we appreciate that especially in this era we have coming up of on the spot kind of out of nowhere uh, updates and information and interviews. It's these things are going to be flying in. You'll want to subscribe. You'll want to be notified when we go live. Otherwise you're going to be missing a whole bunch of stuff. So thank you there, Chris. And that's a wonderful name. Let me tell you, Chris Beck. All right, let's get into it. Uh, the Packers game, the Packers. Anyone want to give me an FTP? Anyone want to give me an FTP? Don Burr, you want to listen up? You want to listen up? Um, FTP. All right. I'll I'll say I'll start out here really quick on the Packers review. Um, I've said it, you know, for a while, and I and I really did go hard at it after the game. And the team, if you looked at the uh, any of the the uh, the social media or anything else that came out after the game, the the focus really was on this team as a family and what a special group of players this team was and. It's obvious. I mean, they were together one and six. They, they, they stayed at it. They were together as a group, uh, a very special group who really, really um, took care of each other the entirety of the season. Uh, I was talking to Jerry. As I told him, I said, the thing about this season and this team, and I hope people do remember it, is 
this isn't the team that won the playoff game. This isn't the team that won the Super Bowl. But this is the team that turned the corner for the Detroit Lions to be able to do just those things. And people need to recognize and think about this team as the one that turned the corner. Because if it hadn't gone where it went this year, think about back, think back to one and six. If this team had given up, if, if this coach had given up, I, I'll say it again and I'll talk about it again later. This is one of my favorite little things to poke people with. If we had taken Malik Willis at number two, after going one and six, the screams for him to be on the field and the potential of maybe that happening because of the pressure of having drafted him, right? Um, this season would not have turned out anything like it did. And uh, this is a special group of people, uh, really, really good. We've got our coach. We've got our coach, right? We know we have our coach. People were worried oh, about yeah. it at one and six. No, 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 it's, it's not that. So we got a great team, uh, and I just hope people really recognize this team as the one that made the turn because these guys, their hearts, their souls, they were out there 100% in, and we'll talk about Comiskey later, but um, Comiskey, the desire sorry. to stay, yeah. right? Right, Riz? The, 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 the want to. By the way, um, Malik Willis got benched by a team in a playoff run for Lions practice squad refugee Josh Dobbs. That tells you how raw Malik Willis is. I'm not. I'm not writing him off yet. Mm-hmm. But the people in Tennessee were like, "He's that bad?" Um, and yeah, he kind of was. But mm-hmm. better than Tim Boyle went to Chicago. <laughs> well, Tim, Tim Boyle got Chicago week. exactly what they wanted. Let's be honest. <laughs> Chicago. Tim Boyle was two for eight with two interceptions coming in in relief of the Peter man and they benched Tim Boyle and put the Peter man back in uh, <laughs> as the tank commander. Good job for them. By the way, Chicago won the number one pick. Oh, um, it's relatively inconsequential because they in Houston are looking at completely different places. Chicago's not take first off, Chicago is not drafting a quarterback to replace Justin Fields. They're just not. Um, yeah. I don't know where that nonsense comes from. That's, that's silly. That's more absurd than like the lions drafting the number one like offensive tackle prospect to, to replace Decker. Like I no. think I think that's no. literally <laughs> been drummed up by the media just so they have a little bit of drama at the top of the draft and they're trying to but it's it's I mean it's as assured as the Lions picking Matthew Stafford back when they had the first overall pick. It's it's just as assured that they will not be taking a quarterback as it was that we yeah. were now taking they, they might Matthew they Stafford. might trade that pick. And they very well could trade that pick, and it sounds like they're going to try to trade that pick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, uh, well, depending, we're going to talk about Houston a little bit later because they're involved in the the coaching search. But if the status quo of management remains in Houston, they're taking Bryce Young, and Chicago ain't. So that, you know, whether Chicago takes Jalen Carter, or Will Anderson, um, there's some talk that they could actually wind up taking a cornerback. Number one overall, believe it or not, uh, we'll we'll see how that that, that that's for that's for later on. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's um, uh, get time, into good, it. good times with the 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 Lions. God awful backup quarterbacks are infiltrating the world everywhere. David Blau played, um, Case, um, uh, Chase Daniel played <laughs> <laughs> week eighteen. It was like, oh my god, it's like the ghosts of training camp past all the way yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get into a couple of the players that need some love. Uh, first, Hutch. Can we give him a bunch of just jiggly hugs? Get... <laughs> My man got two He's sacks. He's so good. He's so good. Two sacks and a sack of cash for me. He crossed my uh, DraftKings total for the year that I bet on back in August. Thank you, Aiden Hutchinson. Love you, brother. Rookie of the year. Let's get that. Let's let's get that going. I I you know people want to go with sauce. Win. People want to go with sauce, and I know sauce is good, but the problem is, is he just didn't see a lot of action because he's so good. I think that's going to be a little bit difficult. I, I just think that's going to be I, I do difficult. think that the voting is going to wind up being closer than what I think a lot of the large media expects, like the 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 NFL.com, ESPN level, top, you know, those people media. Because I do think that amongst the tier of media that's between me and them, I think that group sees a lot of Aiden Hutchinson um, and those that makes up the predominance of the voters. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. There's yeah. no way Hutch isn't top two. Um, and, and by the way, this was a really, really good defensive rookie class. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of guys who are going to play 
at a high level for a very long time. The Lions happened to get three of them, possibly four of them in this draft, which yep. is amazing. But yeah, it's uh, Hutch. Hutch, I think I had, I thought he was going to get like six and a half, seven and a half sacks. Obviously he passed that. Uh, the, but his overall impact on a game, I think, I think we all kind of underestimated that. And, yeah. and uh, even those of us who were pretty high on him, like he's really, really good already yeah. and yeah. gets there. He's not one of those guys that can win in just one way. Like he showed that he can drop in coverage and, and run in space. That's actually something that Brad Holmes talked about. Like one of the things that really sold them on Aiden Hutchinson was going to Michigan's pro day and they asked him to do a pass drop and he only had to do one. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, can, 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 put that, put that away. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> don't you see that again? <laughs> basically, if you watched uh, Holmes face, when he said that you saw the eggplant emoji pop up, right? I mean, if we were yeah, doing pop up videos, that's what we saw there. Um, absolutely. Yeah, but uh, the Lions, by the way, set the rookie NFL rookie record for amount of sacks by a rookie class. Hutch and James Houston almost got it by themselves. They did need one of Josh Pascal's two sacks, uh, and Rodrigo also had a sack. So they wound up beating the um, – it was only two people, by the way, that did it for the 1999 Titans. It was John Thornton and James, uh, uh, the freak curse. I, why am I blanking on his first name? I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. I can see him. Look, he's, he's the guy that had the ruler like in his hand, which is just, <laughs> the, the foot long ruler in his hand was crazy to me. I see Mike here. Fields is a heck of a running back, not a quarterback. You got to be able to sling the rock. Your two fields and he's in it. Um, I would I would point to their receiving core and say they've got a lot of the same problem that Goff had. Don't write him off yes. as a quarterback yet. They have no talent. One hundred percent. He he does need to get better as a passer. Mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. I said when we played them, Tom Kennedy is wide receiver one in Chicago this year. Like no question about it. He's yeah. the, he would be yeah. the best wide receiver on that team. Yep. You cannot and by the way, their offensive line needs at least three new starters overnight. So they be careful on writing him off. He's certainly better at running than he is at passing at this point. But uh, a lot of that is out of necessity uh, because they have nothing. Their wide receiving core this year was worse than what Jared Goff started with in 2021. Yeah, 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 no, no, absolutely. So I wouldn't write him off yet. I wouldn't be too worried about it. Uh, Jamie Johnson, thank you so much for the super chat. we got awesome season, awesome pod. Cool. Thanks for what you do. Your commentary added to the enjoyment of this season. Go Lions, and I will I will second that. I will be with you. Go Lions. Javon Curse. Yes. Um Yes. Let's let's uh let's keep rolling here. I, I couldn't get think, I couldn't stop thinking of Jermaine, the, the former yeah. Lions safety. <laughs> um they're Jamal related Williams. too. I, I don't think they're brothers, I think they're cousins or something. Jamal Williams. Um emotional moment Jamal after the Williams game. Is awesome. And in the locker I'm room about his great grandfather having game, lost him. I have, I have... And then after that kind of series of emotional moments that he had uh, just came out that he won the NFL uh, NFC offensive player of the week. Good work there. Jamal. That transition that he had in that post game interview, and I believe it was Melissa Stark that he was talking to. First off, she did a really good job with it because she just yeah. kind of let him go. And it would have been a lot of people would have tried to rein him in after that. But she, and, and the, the light switch that he hit after talking about his, his great grandfather and you know, like, legitimate like sorrowful tears and then he goes into <laughs> like yeah we got this baby this is yeah. detroit yep. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, that was that was a remark and that's who jamal is and he look he's a, he's a pending free agent it's something that we're gonna have to discuss um we don't i, I don't think they've had those conversations about who they're keeping I, oh i think they do have a good idea about it but I would just say that if you lose that, that personality, that effervescence, that that type of a guy in this particular cultural locker room, you cannot overpay for that. <laughs> like, you, yeah. like there, there's just give him whatever he needs to come back. Uh, you know, maybe you know, find a uh, a comic book company or a, an anime company to like you know do a series with him as like a like an NIL for an NFL player. Yeah. Something yeah. like that to just keep him in Detroit. Uh, I I will say I would be surprised if he's not back. But again, 
I, I have to repeat the mantra. Every guy who's a pending free agent, I completely remove them from the roster. They're gone until they're back. Do not yep. count on them being back. Yep. Although yep. there's one, and we'll talk about him, uh, who is going to be back. <laughs> like, no no <laughs> yes. doubt. Yes. No, absolutely. I do not. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. All right, we'll get into um, free agency. We'll get to that, Don Burr. Don Burr, you got he's 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 a two name guy with one name, Don Burr. <laughs> uh, we will get to that, Don. Don't you worry, I promise you. Um, okay, want to get uh, Jamal Williams? Congratulations on him and a great season, breaking Barry Sanders' record, the whole thing. I mean, he's uh, such a lovable guy. Um, he even even talked a little bit about mental health in the off season, some of those things as well. He's a guy. He, I, it was rare. I'll put it this way. I love my sports heroes. I love my my, my sports people. But you know, raising a son, I said, don't get too invested in anybody in particular because you just don't know what you have jamal williams is one of those guys and i I would say much like jared goff that the character leads first and and jamal's a a really really great human being and i'm really excited for for what he was able to accomplish and and he hasn't had an easy career he's worked really really hard to get when he's earned what he's got you know what he where he arrived this year so i'm happy for him and i'm really really you know, just just really happy for this guy, and uh, and he's the kind of guy you can really kind of put your heart behind and go with. But um, it, it makes me happy. By the way, first thousand yard rusher in Detroit since Reggie Bush. Yeah, yeah. Remember when we couldn't get a hundred yard rusher or rushers in a game, and we've got like a hundred from I Jamal when and seventy eight and eighty eight, and from uh, from a second running back in Swift. It's like wow, this is good. Do you remember <laughs> when Carry On did it when he got the hundred yards and he broke it? And then he didn't, and then he had to break it again in yeah, the same yeah, game because yeah, he lost yeah. like three yards on the next carry. Yeah, I had yeah. just literally just hit publish on the article, like that he broke it, and then he went back. I'm like, oh my god, no, no. <laughs> yeah. All right, that, let's. It, um, we are so far past those days. It's nice. Th- this whole game, and and this is this is, I'm telling you, we talked about this as the. The passing of the torch, the potential passing of the torch from the NFC great Green Bay Packers to the Detroit Lions. This <laughs> is truly a game, and and it didn't, and and nobody in the media recognized it, but it happened at the end of the game. You had Jamal's interview and and what was going on there. You had Jared Goff congratulating the Seahawks, which was such an awesome move. I absolutely loved that. From Jared, that was just spectacular, just a ball drag. It's the right amount of petty directed at his old team, but not without saying that he's directing it at his old team. And the media, all they could do was talk about how the great Green Bay Packers lost the game. And you had, you know, Collinsworth just, on, I mean, it was terrible. On He was, was on one, of his, one of his worst broadcasts ever. And he's not spectacular in my book. That was absolutely garbage time from him i i it, it was embarrassed i was embarrassed for him yeah that he like there was a couple times there were two plays in a row where he's like i i'm sorry i didn't see what happened on that play like that's literally your job dude if you can't do that because you've got your nose so far up the packers ass then let somebody else who's more a little bit you know better mm-hmm. at it do it mm-hmm. because uh he he clearly could not separate his man love on Aaron Rodgers and all things Packers. Um, and, and I don't think he's doing it to be anti Detroit. And I think, I, I think that, that angle, I, I saw that come out. If, if you he's don't not, think he's not anti Detroit at all. If he you is don't just think so this, in love with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. If you don't think this is already on next year's Bolton board, we came into Lambeau and basically just dismantled the great green big Packers and stole their playoff hopes away and smashed them and and flushed them. I'll leave it at that. And they couldn't do anything but talk about the poor Packers losing. That, I guarantee, is fuel already for next year. Um, this team, this team, and it's, I'm just telling you, they that torch passed, and the people that were in the moment missed it. It's, it's like um, uh, they were Baghdad Bob. They were Baghdad Bob. The place is exploding behind them. There's nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. They missed the true story of what happened last Sunday night, and it was in a, they were disgraced to their to their their field of choice, what they do for a living. But this is this is what happened, and they missed it. That's that's you know, which tells you how much 
you know, actual reporting they do and how much evaluation they, they, they really do versus how much production is done on, on a lot of these broadcasts. So there you go. That's, that's yeah. that. I do want to, you know, g- again, congratulate Goff for his congratulating of the Seahawks because I thought that was absolutely great. I laughed out loud when I saw him do it. Jared Goff is, he's not the guy that, um, that is going to go out there and get you ramped up when he's talking. He's not the guy that's going out there and getting people. And, and coach talked about it in his, in his presser, Jared Goff is the guy that, you know, Campbell's getting everyone freaked out, getting everybody excited, getting everybody worked up. And then he opens the door and says, Hey Goff, you gotta get calm these guys down and get them to play. Okay. See ya. <laughs> and leaves it. But Goff's that guy. Goff, he's the level-headed guy who can get these guys' heads into the game. And cle- you, people call him a game manager. We'll talk a little bit about this. Jared Goff brings so much more to this team than what he gets credit for. I think he is the perfect offset for the coaching staff that we have and the coaching style we have. And he, it puts him in a true leadership position in the role that he's in. It's, and we'll t- I, I will talk more about it in a little bit. But um Jared Goff, much, much respect to this guy. And if you listen to the, the, not only how he slid the Seahawks congratulations in there, but how he slides, I, you know, I, I love when he takes the barbs of the media, how he slides those things in there. Brad Holmes does it too. I, it's great to watch them from the podium, not take that crap. They do it so much better than any of the, 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 the previous regimes. This is, it's so fun to watch. It is so fun. You know, being, being, being aggressively passive aggressive myself, I have a great appreciation for Goff and how he handled that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so good for that. I want to I want to talk about one last topic. So, if you if, is there anything else about the Packers game that you wanted to, you wanted to grab on really quick? You can grab on it like Collinsworth yeah, head Aaron's nuts if you want. And go for it. <laughs> I, I think the way in which the entire defense created things like. That, that the second Kirby interception, the first one got wiped out and probably the only actual valid penalty against the Lions all night. Um, well, I shouldn't say, Jerry was guilty on the on the pass interference. That yep. was, that was yep. you know, it happened. Oh, he, did, he, they, did. he was guilty. They did, but I wish they'd have called it just like that for the rest of the game. They, they, they neglected to remember yeah. what pass they, interference was. They did was. not. Um, <laughs> Jerry, 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 and I know, I know, I know Jerry watches this. One of, my focus for you this offseason, Jerry, Learn to locate the ball, read the receiver a little bit better, and know that the ball's in the air because they got you a couple times on that, and that bothered me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you, I know you're better than that, and you know you're better than that. But just gotta, gotta sharpen that up a little bit. That's work in progress, man. Was, after after the year you had, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. I, I loved the growth that I saw from him, and he played a very good game after that. And uh, I, I was proud of that. He, he recovered nicely. It. One of the things, one of the things that good cornerbacks have to do, you're gonna get beat. You're going to have bad plays. you got to bury them and move on to the next one. It's like a pitcher in baseball. Somebody's going to hit a home run off you. you got to face the next batter. Like, you can't, like, throw a meatball up there because you're sad that the guy just, you know, torched you. People and talk I thought about, Jerry did a very good job of that. Talk, people talk about a sophomore slump. This was this was Jerry's sophomore slump. Coming off an injury, coming back this year, his second year. His first year was, like, tops, tops amongst rookies. Like, absolutely tops amongst rookies. Yep. He came back. He played very well this year. He played very, very well this year. He was absolutely uh, NFL Great. caliber, cor- you know, number two cornerback on a team. And a lot of people were talking towards the end of the season. Jerry's maybe, I mean, he's probably our number one cornerback. What I think in the year three is where the magic happens for cornerbacks, you know, and sauce is obviously an anomaly, but you have a guy in Jerry, yes, yes, he who, is. <laughs> you have a guy in Jerry who coming back next year, you should have very, very big expectations from. And I think he will. I, I, think he will I, I fully those. expect him to be, I think I fully expect him to be a starting outside cornerback next year and an asset for the team. Yeah. No, no question about it. We're, yep. we're, we'll get into the draft. needs. We're not going to do that tonight. Cause that's, like that, we got a, we, it's a long off season, and we got we still have like a ton of topics to talk about, and uh, one of them is fairly time sensitive, so we're gonna try to focus on that kind of stuff first. But we're we're gonna have draft stuff coming left, right, up, down, a b a b b a b a. Sorry, x y z z y for the older folks. Uh, all right, let's get into this. Oh, I get this is the last topic I want to talk Otherwise about. I said with... good rush. So. <laughs> the the last thing I want to talk about with the Lions and the Packers game is something I keep hearing, and, and it's, I, 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 I know why it's got me. I know why it's got me now. And it's the idea of the brand-new Lions. 
And I was like, okay, yeah, I know it's the shtick. Oh. And then they all do what's, that What's thing. wrong with being new? What's wrong with There's being this, better? There, and and I, I'm, I'm okay with, you know, and I get it's the, that, uh, you know, Mackie shows thing. And it's cool, right? They, they've got all kinds. I, listen, I watch him on occasion. He's got a good show and they do really, you know, they got a good thing going. But the thing is, is the brand new Lions is your anchor to the same old Lions. And, and it was McAfee who showed me exactly what this is. It's just another way to keep the old attack alive. When he said, the brand new Lions beat the Green Bay Packers, but the same old Lions missed the playoffs. And I was like, that's it. The only thing, the only reason the brand new Lions exists is so they have the brand, the same old Lions to lean back on and smack them with and continue to use as a cudgel when things don't go right. Drop them both. Just drop that entire cultural chunk and move on, please. Don't hold on you, to the, that you, old crappy past. Don't don't put those hands together. like that's that's just that's patronizing. That's that's a, I, I was unaware of that I don't. As you know, I consume very little media. Yeah, 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 yeah. In, in my industry, uh, I that that's off my radar. So I that but that's. Yep. That's very um, shock jockey, and I don't like that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, and it's not a McAfee thing, Rich. Um, it's cool to embrace the brand new lines, but don't tie it to the same old lines. Embrace something else. Find another catchphrase. Bury that old thing and don't let it come back because the longer you hold on to that, the more you give power, if you will, to that same old lines mantra. And we just, we are a brand new lions. Just put it down, just bury it and move on. That's kind of where I'm at. So I just want to put that out there. You guys I, can I do whatever you that. want, right? You can do whatever you want. And 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 the, the fan base will move where it wants. But I'm just, when I'm read that, that's kind of my take and my response now. Because I knew the brand new lines. I got it. I understood. And I, and, but I, for some reason, it rung like uh, with me. And when that happened, it was like all the alarm bells. I got it. This is why I didn't like it. I, I, I'm with you. I, you know, and one of the things, you know, the people who keep bringing up the SOL, are the people who were so wedded to it being the reality that it's it, it shaped their identity. And uh, I've used this example before, but in Cleveland, when that team went into Pittsburgh and won a playoff game with their head coach quarantined in his own basement, yeah, all the yeah. people who made their careers off being negative, they had nowhere to go. And those people have fallen out of favor, and a couple of them no longer work in Cleveland. That's going to happen in Detroit, too. The people who are professionally negative, and I've railed against them for a very long time, they, they've they painted themselves into a corner, and there's no way out of that other yeah. than out of town. Your 97 and that's going to happen with some of these guys. You've watched your 97 ones paint themselves into this corner for the year, and they've been working hard. They started um, trying to unpaint themselves, but one in six this year, when this team was one in six, Look at who could evaluate. Like the people that said golf's got to go, that were Dan Campbell's got to go. Their opinions aren't, aren't don't matter, right? Because the one thing is you can react in the moment, fine, but that you've put that on paper, you've put that on tape at that point, and a reaction after one and six is not after a season. You need time, a, a season to evaluate. You need more than just a couple of games because again. Had we done the Malik Willis thing after one and six and the screams for him to play, it would have been just a, a train wreck. These guys did what they do. Dan Campbell grew as a coach like we knew. We know now that Dan Campbell is the yep. coach of this team and that Dan Campbell is a damn good coach. We've seen it. We've seen him grow. We've watched this team grow. We've watched them come together as a family like no other Lions team that I can remember. No other team before. These guys didn't give a crap about what was going on when it was out there. So you have a lot of people that are in the prevent, pr professional doom bit sayer business who now have to turn around and be something else. And they're going to, they're going to pull it. I mean, there's, there's one outlet out there that like would whipsaw from week to week. Their, their, their responses. It's just to get eyeballs. It's not honest. And that's fine. If you enjoy it, it's great. Cause it's all, it is all just entertainment. And if you're, you're entertained by it, that's awesome. I'm not here to tell you what to do or to listen to but one of the things you know and riz you know me i get all uptight about this i have this kind of justice yes, boner <laughs> right <laughs> this justice boner and um i'm just like don't lie to me don't ever lie to me you lie to me you've lost me that's the worst sin you can commit to me is to lie to me and i hate it when my media is obviously lying to me and treating me like an idiot so that's that i'll leave it at that um same line let's talk about the brad holmes presser and I will kind of just go back to the topic I just touched on. 
Uh, it seems like we have our head coach, and that's confirmed nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> doubt about it. No <laughs> doubt about it. It was uh, it, the, it, and so the thing was was the dance book the day before, and we're used to having Dan talk to us. We understand mm -hmm. where he's going to come from, and he talked a little bit longer than normal just because it was the end of the season. But this was the first time Brad had talked to us since the trade the day after the trade deadline. Yeah. Uh, when he when and it was dealing with the Hawkinson thing, and we won't talk to him again as a formal group until the combine. Mm -hmm. So this was like the last time we're going to get his thoughts on it. And and at the combine, I will tell you because I'm one of the people that's there standing in front of the podium and and making all the people behind me not be able to see uh, because I'm I, I love blocking out the sun to those people. That's great. <laughs> um, we ask him almost exclusively draft or free agency related questions down there. And he like, there's no, this was his last chance to address us about what happened this season. Uh, he might get some of that later, like back his at, at his introductory last. press conference and training camp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, but it, the, the focus that he had on praising the coaches and going through and just the family familial feel uh, uh, of what this Lions team is and what he has helped create by his and Dan's um, meshed personalities. You know, they like to say that they, as I've said this before, they're, they both say that the phrase cut from the same cloth independently, but they're clearly, again, they are woven together from the same seamstress and it's working very nicely. Uh, and it's, and it's crazy that, and you got to give Sheila and Rod Wood and whoever else helped them find these two and put them together to recognize that, yeah, these two guys who've never met before, they're going to be good together. That took some probably leap of faith type of like, uh, we, I, I, I think we have to do this and it's paid off so well. Obviously we don't have our playoff wins yet, but I feel real good about the direction of the team. And I think that's the prevailing you can see it too in Brad. Like he understood that. Like he's he's facing a room now. When, when uh, and I wasn't there. Uh, I was I was sitting in the in the car outside of my daughter's school waiting for her to get done with basketball practice. But um, the media room there in general is much more receptive and I don't want to say respectful, but there's the tone of the questions uh, are more where they're confident that they're not like going to burn Brad. Uh, and and you, you talked about Brad, you know, fight, push him back a little bit. He did. Uh, and I'm glad he did, uh, especially at the one question uh, it needed to be clapped back at. Um, Dan did it better. Uh, but, uh, that, that's, that's Dan's personality. But there's a, uh, like, I, I, can't, I can't think of this weird because I'm just pretty good with words. Um, there, there's like, they, Brad Brad's comfortable being Brad in front of these places, and I never got that with Bob Quinn, like ever. Uh, I didn't really. I was only there for a. I was I was in the media room with Martin Mayhew twice, so I don't I can't really speak to that. But the 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 confidence in what they're doing and the force of personality that that Brad and Dan each have, and also together like formed like you know it, it, it's like exponential. It's not, it's not just like squared. It's like doubled um, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know math. Um, that, that, but it's, you, you know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're, they're not worried about the questions that are being asked. And I will say, I don't think that Brad prepared for the variety of questions that he was going to get, but I thought he did a very good job of explaining things. Um, and and I, again, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the other. I watched the Andrew Berry press conference in Cleveland and Andrew clearly has people like like barrage him with random topics and so he's mentally prepared for it i don't think brad does that and i think it's good that brad doesn't do that because i think you get more introspective honest answers out of that and i know dan doesn't dan just goes up there and is like shoot fire away and i'm going to tell you what i think i love that i love it chris i can't hear you I cannot hear you. 
Yeah, I muted myself to shake my water. Sorry. Um, they're both wily enough to. <laughs> <laughs> I mixed in a little bit of um, um, <laughs> electrolytes. Um, they're wily enough to be able to answer a question in a way where you don't recognize that they're not answering your question. <laughs> and they don't do that. They don't do it. It's not all the time. But like Matt Patricia would talk in a way that you were like, just stop. Stop patronizing. So Matt, Matt right? knew that he had he had X amount of time. And if he answered a question for five minutes, you're yeah, filibuster, you're only gonna get to ask him two or three questions. He was very, very savvy about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was he but these guys will do it, but you walk away satisfied with what they said, right? They'll they'll answer it and you'll understand when you when when they're done that they told me what they could, and that's what they that's the other part of it. They will tell you what they can, but they also are savvy enough to Agreed. know there's things I can't tell you, and I'm just not gonna answer those things. I'm gonna I'll talk around them if I have to. And you walk away and you're like, I understand it. That's okay. And that's that authenticity. Like you talked about uh Bob Quinn, imposter system, uh imposter syndrome, a hundred percent. He knew he didn't belong there. And and he was trying so hard to look like and convince himself that he did belong there. And then the last I'm one I'm talking about. I'm going to carry my baseball bat up there with me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the last one about a guy who's, in, and I get it with the confidence that you talked about, but I want to ask you about the confidence in the Tom Luan uh, dress code. There is a there is an element of overconfidence possible, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Not th that mental picture is burned into my head forever. For those who weren't he's, here, when you said it last time, describe what he was wearing. <laughs> he was wearing. Oh my god! Um, I belt. don't remember which is which, but there was there were brown shorts, a white belt, and black shoes <laughs> with a like blue and orange, like light, very light, light blue with like very thin yellow or orange pinstripes as a polo shirt he wore that at training camp um mike hodges was there because I, I remember talking to mike that day so mike mike knows this too and i know mike's in the chat you you, you remember that buddy if you remember exactly what he's wearing you put it up there because uh uh that was i think that was actually the first thing that i met mike. there's yeah there's was, so there's an over there's an overconfidence that's possible right so let's let's tom, let's, tom let's, Luan <laughs> is one of three people that i preemptively blocked on twitter um, <laughs> along with the steve miller band and a certain politician. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tampa Detroit Lion. Hey guys, what's the status of Anzarike? What can we expect from him next year? And what's the feeling? What's... Give us some time on that one, okay? Uh, we will yeah, talk I Levi, would just say, but I just don't think he's gonna be back. I, Riz, I, I think I, you're I don't expect back. him to ever play football again, anywhere. And that is not just my opinion. Yeah. I didn't want to miss Tampa. Thank you, Tampa Detroit Lion, for the yeah. wonderful super chat. I didn't want to miss this question, yeah. though. But um, uh, I, I will tell you, the Lions are not planning on him in their their scheme of what they're approaching this offseason. That's been made clear. Yeah. Um. So back to the Holmes presser. Anything else that we want to cover on on Brad Holmes' Pete side? So he talked about Jared Goff and the quarterback question, and this it's a great the question that's been out there. So. He was asked two different questions, um, and and Chris, I sent you the transcript from it, and I'll just go over. I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll read it because I think it's important to get it this way. Yeah. Um, and, and I will not try to impersonate his his voice because I can't speak in his cadence. Um. So he said, uh, "Where's it at here?" I always uh, mess up uh, your voice and, and Holmes' voice when I hear you speak. I'm like, "Is that Brad?" Oh no, that's Jeff. Sorry. Yeah. On the potential of drafting a quarterback with the sixth overall pick. Now, before I say this, understand that the question was directly phrased only the number six overall pick, mm -hmm. not 18, not later in the draft, just specifically the number six pick. And this is what he said. That I'll say this. No, seriously, I think that I think it's a lot easier to get worse at quarterback than to get better at quarterback. And so in this league, um, that's weird, okay. Uh, and so I think what G what Jared has done this year, he, the captain of the ship of a top three offense, and I want to say that he was top 10 statistically in most passing categories. So, and again, you know how we approach the draft. Like, we're never going to turn down a good football player. So if there's a football player we really love, I mean, we're going to make sure every stone is turned. But I do think that Jared has proven everybody that to everybody that he is the starting quarterback for us. All right, that's a vote of confidence in Jared Goff. No other way to interpret that. And can I, say, 
can, the, the one thing, and this is one of the most, I, I hate this phrase. I know people say it. If he's, if their guy is out there, they got to go get their guy, right? Brad Holmes just told you they've That's got the guy. That's the next question came in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Brad Holmes told you, told you they got so, their guy though. Yeah. Uh, where's it at here? Oh, uh, James Houston draft on drafting on his philosophy about drafting a quarterback high. And again, high is a relative. It was not specified. This could be third round. Third round could be considered high. It could be six. It could be 18. It could be 48 or wherever the Vikings pick winds up. Um, on, on, on drafting a quarterback high and sitting him behind an established starter to develop properly. And this, um, Sort of contradicts the last answer, but it's it's interesting to to play it out. This is his answer. I think it's a lot of merit, and there's a lot of proof that behind that. You can see countless examples of guys that got drafted high. Obviously, Mahomes comes right up off the bat of them trading up and taking him that high and sitting him. But you can go back to man, the guy we just got done playing in Aaron Rodgers, uh, which they did when Brett Favre was there. Obviously, mm-hmm. with the Chiefs. Mahomes uh, took over for Alex Smith, who had been a Pro Bowler the year before, uh, which is important context. So there's a lot of proof in the pudding behind taking that approach, and I don't see anything wrong with it. It's a premium position. They don't grow on trees. They're really hard to find. Just like I said earlier, and he's referencing the, the just the one we just talked about, it's easy to get worse at that position than get better at that, at that position because there's so few of them. But I'm not against at all that philosophy of draft one, let them sit and develop and just kind of see what you've got down the road. So he covered all bases there. Mm-hmm. Anybody who thinks that anybody who wanted to hear that Jared Goff is our guy, got it. Anybody who wanted to hear that they're open to taking a quarterback high in the draft, they got it. That's brilliant by Brad Holmes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He didn't give anything away. I'll tell you his first answer that Jared Goff is his guy is the answer. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll, and, we'll t- and we've known that we've, kn- yeah. we collectively, not just you and I collectively as lions we should know that by now, we've been trying. He wanted Jared Goff. Mm-hmm. Like Jared Goff he was not like, a throw in, in that trade. So he wanted Jared that. Goff in that. That was, that was, that was Brad. Like that's his guy, man. That's his dude. Uh, remember, D- Brad was a big reason why they drafted him number one overall. He's a believer, and his belief in that was absolutely validated. On Jared Goff was fantastic down the stretch this year. Yeah. He was he was he was the biggest reason why they went eight and two down the stretch after the one and six start. And let's, Jared Goff absolutely deserves that credit. Let's he, talk he about does. this. And, Let's talk okay. just really quick because because this the, let's start with the Twitter topic and and we'll we'll take it from there because this has been a okay. good segue from from uh, Brad Holmes to to Jared Goff. Um, yeah. Line up line up the topic on Twitter for us. I think that's a good way to outline the rest of the conversation. Right. Let me find it. I I don't have it in front of me. Do you have it? Uh, I because we, we were we were asked about it. Did just do it a mental summary. You don't have to be exact. It's okay. People, I, I'm, I, I'm, be angry. I'm like spaced out on it. So <laughs> okay. we were asked basically. Ah, where's my bookmarks? My bookmarks. That's not it. Ah, okay. Do you do you know what it was? Because I'm I'm spaced out. It was replacing Jared Goff, I, and right. and there was a whole lot of, well, he had a good year, but and I but I don't believe in him. That I mean that was that was right. a, that was basically the the conversation that um that the, you were involved there's, in. Right? Yes, um, and I and it was phrased to a lot of us, um, not just you and I, yeah, but other yeah, people were involved in it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the question is, and the answer that I gave was, and and I I addressed Brad's quote in this: "What if it's Jared Goff that gets worse?" And that is my fundamental driving principle for this off season: is either mitigating any possible regression from Jared Goff or having a damn good insurance policy, one better than Nate Sudfeld or Steven Montez or Tim Boyle. And uh, I am someone uh, I'm more of on the insurance side because I think you've created an ideal situation for, for success for Jared Goff. He's got a very good offensive line. He's got a cadre of weapons 
not just at wide receiver. I think he trusts his tight ends. I think the running backs out of the backfield, notably Swift, are very good receiving targets that he has faith in. And he he knows the offensive coordinator. He trusts the offensive coordinator. They've worked together to craft an offense that takes advantage of what Jared Goff does well. He's set up to have a lot of success. Um, my definition of him regressing, though, is he's got the team record right now for the most throws in a row without an interception. That's unsustainable. And what happens if he goes back to being the guy in New England, in Miami, um, early in the season, who was having turnover issues, who was having communication issues with his receivers? And I don't think that's going to be an issue, by the way. But Mm -hmm. let's just say that he's 90% of what he was at the end of the season. That's still a very good starting quarterback. And and Brad Holmes absolutely believes in Jared. Jared Goff will be the starting quarterback in 2023 Anybody who says different is just in a massive delusional denial. Sorry. Um, he's, so, just, he's, he's a starting quarterback. He's earned the starting quarterback role. I want him to be the starting quarterback next year because he gives the team the best chance to win, like, of anybody that you could get, Yeah, whoever. Like, yeah, like he's, he's, he's the guy. Um, but long-term, that's where, you, that, that's where it comes in. And one of the other analogies I brought up, was this is a conversation that the Cincinnati Bengals had circa 2014, 2015 with Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton was a pro bowler both of those years. His numbers in one of those seasons are very, very close to what Jared Goff just posted. And they chose to roll with Dalton, and that ball of string unrolled unsuccessfully. And maybe it's me being a little gun-shy about that, but also I'll go back before that. The Houston Texans had this conversation when Matt Schaub threw for 40, 4,200 yards, 41 touchdowns in a year. Um, and he became Mr. Pick Six. And they had a couple of barren years when their defense was dominant because they trusted in a quarterback who was good, but not proven that good for that long. And so, that's that's sort of my background context for why I am going to continue to advocate that they use a high pick the way the question was phrased i'm not going to specify which pick because i don't know yet but they need to take a quarterback with a high pick as insurance and as motivation and this is something chris i've talked to you about privately if jared goff can't handle the fact that they bring in a quarterback who might threaten him he ain't the guy no more like if he's if he's that insecure he didn't deserve that and, and i don't get the sense that jared goff is that guy i don't I, 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 Matthew Stafford, by the way, was Stafford absolutely had influence in what that's why they did not draft a quarterback for was it seven years before they took Brad Kaya, who sucked? Um, and they knew he sucked when they drafted him. Like that was that was more of to like shut the fans up, like, well, how can we have a backup quarterback? How can we keep signing these bozos? Um, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> Ma- Matthew Stafford hid too many of your problems as a quarterback. Matthew Stafford was a problem because of the way he played. And that's how Chris Durham and guys like that continued to get jobs and how uh, Kenny Galladay looked good in Detroit. Um, Matthew said, and, I, and that one catch in New York, that one, one catch in New York this year looked great. Yeah. He's got oh, fewer dang. catches than Kirby, but the thing is, <laughs> um, it was sweet though. And, and, and um, Matt, Mike here says it build around golf is smarter don't waste high picks on quarterbacks look at the 49ers yeah their game manager jimmy g is really the quarterback of that team or unless you want to go to brock purdy and say let's just wait to the last pick of the draft to get our quarterback i mean that's another that's another strategy um but the idea is for me let me just kind of run through a couple of things right okay uh lions offense in 2022 scored a touchdown on 87 percent on goal to goal drives okay this one's from i I believe uh, was best in the league was it not yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jared Goff's 43-yard pass to Khalif Raymond traveled 52 yards in the air. Goff's second longest completion by air distance this season. Remember, he can't throw the ball long, and he can't win games in cold. Uh, Goff is the only the player. Zach Wilson pro, that was a Zach Wilson pro day throw. Practical application of it. Goff is the only player to earn the maximum 99 next-gen stats passing score when using play action this season. Um, of the four teams in the NFC North, there is only one team with a positive Point differential, and that is the Detroit Lions. 
The Detroit Lions committed the fewest turnovers in the 2022 NFL season, and your quarterback is generally one of the larger generators of turnovers. And I hear people saying, oh, golf throws are bad, you know, just these bad golfs and the, uh, the 360 no scope and yada, yada, yada. Jared Goff set a Lions team record, highest TD to in interception ratio, a Lions team record, uh, and the lowest interception rate. And he tied the highest single season passer rating with 99.3. And that's starting the season going one and six. I'll also go on to say, and then I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just driving these points home because it really, really bothers me. If you're building a team, okay? And you look at your team and we'll just really quick. We'll say, okay, special teams ranked number one, right? Uh, offense ranked eighth, eighth, fifth. Eight, eighth overall by PFF. Okay. Defense, well, you're 32nd. And if you think a quarterback is what's going to fix your team, you're smoking some of the best stuff. And I, and, and please allow me to partake as well, because if you really, really want to make an impact moving from eighth to fourth, we'll say as an offense is going to get you incrementally less than going from 32nd to 20th on the defense. Remember when we went one and six, we could have easily won three to four more of those games because we scored enough points. We were the number one offense in the league at that point. Other, other than the, other than the Patriots game, right? I mean, we were the number one offense in the league. We were, we didn't have a quarterback problem. We didn't have a quarterback problem this year. We had guys that were hurt. And then we can talk about, oh, he's got to have the perfect situation to be able to deliver. Well, Matthew Stafford never freaking delivered until he got the perfect situation. Quarterbacks can't deliver. No single, hey, look, Justin Fields, he didn't have the perfect situation. What did he deliver? I'm telling you, it's a team freaking game. If quarterback wins are not a stat, then the quarterback has to have the perfect situation in order to deliver is a bullshit line. It's a Why do you think line. Jalen Hurts got better this year? What did they, what did they do? They traded for they traded for AJ Brown. They got Devontae Smith going. They have a very good run game. They have a fantastic offensive line. Like and that, then, that, and then I'm, what I'm do you want? You like, want do you want a Zach Wilson, a guy who can't lead a team? Because that's oh wow, look how great a quarterback he is. But then there's Jared Goff, who can lead this team, who perfectly complements your coaching staff, as we talked about. I mean, across the board, Jared Goff is the guy. Is he the super athletic run around quarterback makes you no, he's not. That's not his style. But I think people are really in love with that flashy style right now, and the NFL is about to make an evolution. I think we're going to start evolving away a little bit from that. I don't mind having one of the best offenses in the league with a guy who's a game manager and has to be a pocket passer. I don't care. Oh, we had to scheme the offense to make it work for him. What the fuck do you think they do with Patrick Mahomes? I mean, Jesus Christ, you build your offense around your fucking quarterback. The, the excuses are lunacy, why, you, why that would be? I don't understand why that would be a bad thing that you tailor your offense to your most important player, which is your quarterback. Like, that's oh, smart. Yeah. Like, why it's, would you push back against that? You've got like, a, you've got a unit that is just singing, and you want yeah, to take away that. the captain of the unit. Now, I say all that, right? I, I say I say all of those things, but I agree. We need to draft. A quarterback, but I'm you, here's where you and I differ. I think we sign a veteran this off season as the backup, and we not. get a guy third or fourth round that we're gonna we're gonna build up as as quarterback number three and see how he flies. Jared Goff's 28 years old. I hope not. The idea that Jared got like like who's asking what if what if Patrick Mahomes doesn't can't play anymore next year and all of a sudden re regresses to this horrible quarterback? No, but what if, but Chris, what if, I'll, what if, what I'll what stop if? you right there because. The the track record for Goff is was that Bowl. he was not good in 1920 or 20. He had three bad years. How much of that is McVay and the people around him? Because when Matthew Stafford won in, in, in LA, everyone's like he's got the same. He didn't have the same players. He had OBJ. He had um who who was he had, he had a whole number of players on that team that were not players when uh when Jared Goff was there. McVay right, was but, shitting all over Goff and 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 not giving him a true opportunity and not helping him as a quarterback. I I think the situation is 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 what dictated what happened to Goff and what I, had him I, have a I, bad year. I disagree year. with you on that. He he, he Sam did not Darnold play is well. a Jet. A lot Sam Darnold is a jet and he shows up in Carolina and he yeah. plays pretty damn well. He's a whole different quarterback in Carolina. The situation matters. The situation absolutely matters. Because I don't know of any superstars on the offense he, in he, Carolina. He, he, he was not he was not good in Detroit in 2021 either. 
he was good enough to keep the job. And, and again, this is where Brad's faith in him pays off. But I need insurance against fallback to Jared Goff being who he was for three, three and a half seasons before the, the great run at the end of this year. Uh, do I believe that Jared Goff is going to be good? Yeah, hell yeah, I do. But I need an insurance, and I don't want to pay Chase Daniel six million dollars when no. I can pay a defensive tackle that much. I, no. Like I'm, I'm not paying for a veteran again. I, yep. I want a high end rookie with developmental upside in case Goff, whatever he can't win the big game. Do, doesn't he just progress. beat the Packers in El Hambo on the biggest game of the Lions season? <laughs> he can't win the big game. He can't win in the cold. He can't. These things, these narratives are so silly. He, he threw those out. He threw those out pretty good. But I'm my point is is I'm not. I don't want to pay for a veteran backup when I can use that money to get a better defensive tackle in free agency or a better cornerback mm -hmm, or a better mm -hmm, tight end mm -hmm. in free agency. And you're, do, you have limited resources this year with what you can do in free agency. It's not, they're not like in a cap strain, but if you want to get premium, you got to skimp somewhere. And that's where the cost control of drafting a quarterback in the first or second round mm -hmm. with one of those top four picks really pays to your advantage. Because then I, you've got a guy in your system, and and they're and and this is important. They're not going to force it if they don't see one. But if they see one that they like, and I don't know who it would be, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to speculate on that at this point. They find one that they like. That is so much smarter of a move than going out and wasting money on Tim Boyle 2.0 or 4.0 or where the bleep he is. I don't office. want that again. I I want to see them go out and get a quarterback that if Jared Goff breaks his finger on a helmet next year, can come in and take a playoff team to the playoffs and not be you know, like, oh, my God, Tim Boyle throwing two interceptions and eight passes every freaking time he's on the field, which is his track record. They've got to get better at that position. They have to. And the best way to do that is by drafting somebody who doesn't, doesn't have, have to, to get better at the second quarterback. Offenses. They have to get better at the second quarterback. Absolutely. That's yes. what you're saying. Yes. Okay. 100%. Okay. Yeah. I want to, I mean, just really quick, I got to say, uh, golf is emphatically worse when pressured than others are. I got to tell you, Matt Stafford's got more interceptions than anybody, and he got, he had all kinds of pressure this year and didn't play so well. Uh, I don't well, think that the, golf the, is. The, the backing on that, though, is that golf is 29th when under pressure, and he was, I believe, fourth when not under pressure. So there, there's a very radical schism between. Not being pressured and being pressured. So what every every quarterback goes. There's no what perfect if Panay quarterback. goes down with an injury next year, and your right tackle suddenly becomes Matt Nelson. They did, and that, all though. of a sudden your pressure rate goes up from I think it was six point eight percent to ten percent. That's that's two or three more throws a game where Jared Goff is under pressure when he does not play well. It's proven he doesn't play well. He didn't play well this year when under pressure when all everything else was hunky dory for him. So that that is a very legitimate concern. I, I'm not going to downplay that at all. No, 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 no. I, but but it's rare that a quarterback is good when under pressure. I think Aaron Rodgers' legend under pressure is because of how many penalties he, he he's able to pick up. Right. I mean, it's 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 a different a different different thing. Yeah. He makes poor choices and, when and, under pressure, but he did face pressure. And number one, and number two, we have an offensive line that's in place. I think you saw the offensive line change from last year to this year in the Rams be the direct effect you saw what that was on on matthew stafford right i mean geez, and how many throws he was able to throw and, and had, everybody else by the way yeah yeah that's that yeah. that that fell off Literally you can't Andrew play Whitworth scared happened. you can't play scared you have to have your backups in place but you also have to have your best team on the field um and and as 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 holmes said it's a lot easier to get worse at quarterback than better and that's why I'm agreeing with you 100% that getting a backup, I don't think the first round or the second round is there. I think where this team gets better, markedly better, and makes a significant improvement is if they pick, they just, it's improving that defense. I'm not saying you can't if you get a quarterback in the first or second round. I'm just saying the focus for me is 100% in going from 32 to a number that's a hell of a lot better than that because eight to four incrementally is, 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 is nothing. If you're still at 32 on defense, they're going to get better Then they did get better at defense just because the young guys started playing better and they're going to have more experience. Well, we're going to get, 
they they clearly need an outside cornerback. They clearly need a slot cornerback. Like those those are you got to have those. Um, with the slot cornerback, slot safety, however you want to phrase that, I I think they're more open to making that a cornerback role than a safety role. And look, yeah. Will Harris, Will Harris did fine for being Will Harris at that. I, I dare say he stepped up pretty nicely at the end of the season. Played a couple of very good games at the end of the season. Uh, will he be back? We'll see. But that's it. That's a position where they have to get better. And, and, uh, and Will Harris is awesome, man. He, he is a person. I'm, I'm going to start there. I'll start with it. He's such yeah, a yeah. great He's a dude. dude. He's he really easy is. to root for. But the thing about him, yep. and this is why you I know you and I are in a little bit different spot with him. I haven't written him off either because this is the first time he's had coaching that's been developmental and he's developed. He's well, actually that's 100% gotten true. he's gotten significantly better. He got than better. He, yeah. And I I I feel even our warrior who I'm kind of out on to be honest with you, but sophomore slump maybe they didn't have anybody with the prior regime helping them and developing them and I think that they had they they came from a worse spot than than you know their years in the league would tell you and I I, I feel like they another year this year of seasoning and an off season is really going to see both of them improve I and and I'll be completely fair and honest I might be a little bit kind of because they're current lions kind of emotionally attached a little I bit I don't think Amani's back Yeah I don't I don't I don't, I don't either but I think I, I think Amani has a lot more talent than what he had this year what he showed this year so i don't know what the hell happened to him i really don't know he what uh but so this is where like going into this he was very good in 2021 he was the lions best defensive back in 2021 and look what happened yep. like the situation around him got better and he couldn't hang you cannot discount that that happens with jared goff obviously not to the level of amani falling down but again and and I I will not waver from this. The quarterback getting worse. The potential is that Jared Goff could be that quarterback who gets you worse. And I need insurance against that. But that and could I need be true as damn of insurance as I can get. He could be the guy that gets you to the Super Bowl. Yeah, he could, could be. be the guy that gives you the be. the Kansas City L A game and pulls that one out. He could be. He he. The the narrative that he can't win big big games is just so tired and and he's yeah, that's 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 inaccurate. Yeah, he's yeah. been in. He's been in. He hasn't been in that many. No, to begin with, the um, fear he, that he could get the, worse the, is what? real. It is real that the fear that he could get worse. I like just even so we, you just talked about all the records that he set. He's not going to, I forget what the touch on the interception range. He's, let's say next year is his, somewhere between this year and his average between that, which would be 24 and nine, um, I think is, is a fair, maybe a little bit more on the touchdown side, maybe 26 and nine, um, 26 and 10, maybe. Like that's, that's fallen back. Like that's, that's maybe one less win for you. Um, again, I, I abhor the idea of paying a, a veteran backup quarterback five to eight million dollars a year to come in here and hopefully what if never it's play. what if it's prime Sean Hill? No, Interesting. this okay. this team is not in that position. And I'll tell you why, because Jared Goff, you've got him for two more years. He's your starter for sure next season. If he's good next season, he's going to start making a lot more money. Mm -hmm. um they're not doing anything with him contractually this offseason nor should they uh, but after next year it's entering the final year of his contract he's going to make what 31 which is a perfectly reasonable deal for him it might actually be under market value if jared goff plays in 2023 the way he played in 2022 you better believe he's going to understand that yep. and then there's the difference between being where baltimore is right now where they kind of have to pay Lamar Jackson, sixty million dollars a year. Jared's not going to get that. Don't, but contextually, because they they were proven that their backups can't play. Uh, that I want leverage there. I want a proper succession plan in place. I'm okay with sitting a guy in the first or second round next year who doesn't play mm -hmm. or only plays mop up duty or specific packages. I'm perfectly fine with that. I think the talent on the roster is good enough that you can do that with three other picks in the first two days, with the money that you're going to spend, with the emphasis on player development, all the great young players that you've got on this team. Like if you're bringing in that many guys, that's that means that some of those guys aren't going to be there anymore. And that 
like I, I see people wanting to draft an edge with number six. I'm like, James Houston's not good enough for you. Josh Pascal isn't good enough for you. Aiden Hutchinson isn't good enough for you. Like that, when you're saying that, you're saying those guys can't play. You're saying when you want to draft two new lines, you're saying Rodrigo can't play. You're saying that Derek Barnes can't play. You're saying that Alex Anzalone, who was one of the best linebackers in the NFC over the last eight weeks, can't play. Uh, and I do explain it back, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, you, you know, you, you got to have safeties. Okay, Deshaun is pretty safe bet to come back. Kirby Joseph just had a phenomenal rookie season. Which of those guys are you sitting and stopping their developmental arc because you're drafting somebody else? Like, there's only a finite number of spots that you can replace with that. Field, yeah. you, you've got to look at your entire team. And I think everybody's saying defense, defense, defense. Sorry, y'all are being naive on this. You're you're ignoring the talent that's already there. You're ignoring the strengths of this coaching staff, which is player development. That's one of the reasons why they take the players that they do because they know they can coach them to bigger and better mm-hmm. things. And if you're – you don't have to draft ready-made studs at all these positions. You, this isn't the Martin Mayhew and the Jim Schwartz coaching staff or the Jim Caldwell coaching staff who viewed player development as a nuisance – Yep. This is the culture that this team has. By the way, that's one of the reasons why Jim Caldwell was fired. Nobody likes to talk about that. He was a zero, zero at player development. Um, me, and he wanted his coaching staff to be that way, by the way. A couple things. First, Kevin, that was a great question you asked, you, you, you had before, but I'm not going to bring up that other quarterback because it'll take Riz down a, 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 a trail. Riz, don't watch the comments for a few. Um, <laughs> wait, no, what? Don't what? Worry, don't what? Worry. We're not going to go there. What? What? I, I, I got to scroll watch. back down. <laughs> no, don't do that. Like, don't it, do like that. and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. Please do like and subscribe. Um, so that that's that. Um, yes, we will cover up a short list of who, who we're drafting the top. But I want to I want to kind of take this to the next the next place. Okay. And and we were going to do this guy last, Riz. But I want to go to this I my readers. I can't first now. We were going to go from Goff. We were going to go to a lot of guys. You mentioned one of them, Schwartz, and some of the others that are that are getting interviews. And a lot of the questions have been coming in on Ben Johnson. The folks in the yeah. in the Slack know uh, about the Chris Dust. I mean, I can share a little. I can't share a lot. And I'm going to say before I share this, because because this is what you do in media. You have to do the tease first. I got some stuff about Brenton Johnson I'm going to share with you guys. And it's something that no one's talked about, nobody's thought about. And it's, it's really, really interesting. But before I do that, I'm going to ask you to like and subscribe to the show. We do it once a show. We don't beat you up with it. But please do subscribe, uh, especially coming up with the draft, the Senior Bowl, all that. We're going to have like five minutes, ten minutes notice, and then we're going to have interviews. And uh, there'll be a lot of Lions royalty there. There'll be a lot of people there and players that we're going to interview. Ronnie you know, uh, Ronnie Bell's going to be there. A lot of people that people are interested in um, from a local perspective and to, to some of the other stuff. You subscribe, you get notified when we go live, you see it. It's going to be happening the whole week at any point from like 8 a.m. until about 8 p.m. Like, uh, it's all on, and we're going to have some coverage from the – we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's going, going to be really see, good stuff. This is, this is a little Riz dust. Yeah. There's a very good chance that at least one of the current members of the Alliance coaching staff will be coaching in Mobile as well. They So this year, the coaching staff and Mass – is doing the Shrine Bowl, not the Senior Bowl. The Senior Bowl is taking coaches from different teams and cobbling them together the way that the Shrine Bowl normally does. They're aiming a little higher. Like the Shrine Bowl used to have guys that were like unemployed and looking for jobs kind of thing. Or like Jerry Jerry Glanville was the coach like three times. Romeo Cornell was down there twice. Like they're taking guys who are upwardly mobile seeking more experience and attention this year in Mobile. And there are a couple of Lions assistants who I know who are being very strongly considered to be in that group. Yeah. That's all I can say. All right. So the topic that's been rolling through the chat a lot is up Ben Johnson and where he's going to go. Like and subscribe. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Still getting over the sick. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to bring something up that nobody's talked about. And I think this is really, really important. What we and, and last time we talked about, well, who do you think the OC is if they have to go in-house um, if, if, Ben goes, and we were Tanner. Tanner's probably the guy. Extra Tanner, right? Tanner yeah. Engstrand. Yep. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this. And by the way, his successor, his successor at the position he's in is already in the building too, in JT Barrett. But let me ask you this: the thing that nobody's thought about or talked about when Ben, let's just say when, okay? Because I'm going to scare you first, and I'm going to make you feel better. 
when Ben Johnson is hired away and winds up in another team, do you think he's not going to take anybody with him? Do you think Ben Johnson is the only guy that's going to go? You talk about these guys. You talk about everyone's talking about Sean Payton, and he's like putting his team together. If Ben Johnson was leaving the team, do you think he hasn't thought about putting his team and his people together? If Tanner is that's the guy what, and they what, work that's together. What, that you, if that is one of the guy, first things that gets asked in coaching interviews. Who's your? Who do you have in mind to be your OC, your DC, your quarterback coach? Your special teams coordinator. You better believe he's cobbling that shit together. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm 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 sitting here telling you right now, he's built in his head. He's built up who he wants to take with him. And and his his it's not I'm not saying he doesn't have experience elsewhere, but as a head coach in the NFL, he's got a who's who do you think he's gonna pick as his offensive coordinator? It's gonna be somebody and, he knows. Uh, and keep in mind, he's got the background of Dan Campbell brought in Anthony Lynn, which was kind of a forced marriage, mm -hmm. awkward, did not work. That's how he got his job. Like, he doesn't want to make that mistake that Dan made. I'm, I'm not, really. Like, I, I thought it would work. Honestly, I, I did. I liked Anthony Lynn. I thought it was going to work. It didn't. Mm -hmm. Shame on me. And it Shame worked for him in San Francisco. It. He's been working out in San Francisco. It's not the... It's yes. the it's so much about where people are versus you know what they can and can't do. I go he's to Sam great Donald because he's for easy. What Shanahan wanted him to do, he, he, Dan Dan wasn't ready to be that kind of coach yet, and Anthony Lynn was not the right guy to be paired with that. So yeah, yeah. that's something you better believe. Ben Johnson is acutely aware of that type of dynamic. Yep. So you look at guys. So you look at guys and who he would take and where they would go. Now you have guys that are under contract, right? And the guys that are under contract, they have to get a promotion if they're going to go somewhere. So you look at what you have and, and what are their capabilities. Are they ready to take that next level role or are they going to stay? So there's there's that piece. But if, if they're under contract and they take a, and then it's a promotion, they, they could go. They could be gone. So the contract doesn't matter if it's, a, it's, if it's that kind of a move. So you've got to think about that. Now, that's actually as you, you think about that and you start getting scared about, holy cow, Tanner goes too. And now our we're outside looking in on who our guy is and who our offensive coordinator is. And now what's going on? Oh my gosh. This is actually one of the reasons why Ben is not leaving. This is one of the reasons why, because I think he wants people that aren't going to be promoted, but that, that are key parts of, of what he does. And I think Ben Johnson is getting great coaching from Campbell this year and going through the process. And I'll tell you this much too. When you go through and do this interview process in, in, in Indy and in Houston, that's not the only people hearing about your interview. They're knowing what your interview is pretty much throughout the NFL after a while. I'm telling you Ben Johnson isn't going anywhere this year. I'm telling you Ben Johnson next year or the year after might be going somewhere. And when he does, he'll probably take some friends with him. And I, I don't like it. I don't like that. The thing about Ben is, does he want, is that bag the most important thing to him? I don't know. I don't know. He's got a new baby on the way, right? There's a lot of stuff going on in the, in the, in the world of Ben Johnson. And only Ben Johnson knows what's in Ben Johnson's head. But I think he's, I think if I'm Ben, there's two things. I'm building up my stable of people that I'll take with me and that I'll bring in if I'm a head coach. I'm still working on that. I'm getting my experience, and I'm good enough that next year I'm going to push this team even further along with my quarterback and my coach and my the team that's here, and I'm going to be able to pull more money and land where I want. I don't have to take the Houston job or the crazy – uh, owner job in, 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 in Indy, I, or the, 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 the disaster that is Russell Wilson in Denver, right? I can now pay in right. Carolina, even uh, there's, there's, I mean, you're building from nothing there. I can pick more where I go. I can make more where I go and I can bring the people I want with me when I go. And that's if I want to do that. I don't think and Ben he Johnson will have more time time to cultivate those sorts of relationships and figure out like, He's he's been in other situations. He, he worked for Miami for a while. He's been he's been around. He's 
for a relatively young guy, he, he does have experience in multiple organizations and will not necessarily just draw upon the Lions for that. Some of the guys that he's worked with, some of the guys that Dan has worked with in the past are in other organizations now and are upwardly mobile. And this is the other part that I'm going to go into. When you're firing your coach or your GM, you don't draft a quarterback that year, do you? No, you want your new guy to have his quarterback, (laughs) don't you? When does Jared Goff, when does his contract run out? Houston's about to do that. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, (laughs) when I tie, we go back to the golf talk from the last topic and grabbing your drafting your quarterback of the future. I don't think you do it with the guy that's about to go somewhere. I think the new guy is going to have his say, and it's going to be part of the hiring process. And then they throw all the treasure. Look, I know we have a lot of treasure this year, but let's just say we can turn our defense in one year. I'm, and, and I'm, this is just for, for conversation. Say we turn, we, we turn this defense around and we're number 12 in the league next year. Right. Why don't you do a, a Rams move and throw all your future treasure to get the quarterback of your dreams? You've got the rest of the team in place. Now you've got your new offensive coordinator who's the OC of your dreams. Now you've got the final piece of the puzzle that you're putting together. I don't know. I, 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 it, that seems to make a lot more sense than taking a swing and then forcing it on somebody else. The timing of the coaches, the staff, the players you have right now, that's one of the reasons why I say I think they sign a veteran quarterback in free agency. I really hope not. And that's where they move. Really so all these things wrong. are tied together. This is the, the universe as, as I see it. So it's interesting, though, because nobody yeah. talked about Ben leaving and who he takes with him. And I think that's a big thing. I'll, I'll also say all the stuff that we talked about with people getting uh, potentially stolen away, the guy who we haven't heard about having a single interview is Deuce Staley, who was absolutely groomed as an assistant head that's, coach as the guy to get all the interviews this year. That, to me, is shocking a huge to me story that he's that's not uncovered. getting looks. It's a huge yeah, uncovered I, story. I agree, and I... I, I need to dig into that because it, it's very surprising to me because they've made no bones about they want Deuce to be that guy. Um, the, the servant leadership thing, like he's the shining example of somebody that they are trying to actively promote. Like they, they have groomed him so hard to be a, a head coach. Uh, and it's very strange to me that he's not even like getting considered. Um, a couple of things with Ben and the jobs that he's interviewed or been requested to interview for. Do not worry about the Houston Texans. Just don't. Um, yeah. Remember where I've worked. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about the Houston <laughs> Texans. I tend to think that Carolina is probably the realest threat. And I won't say that it's not a threat, but I think that they are probably looking at somebody else above him. And if that person wants the job, it's his. Um, that person is not Jim Harbaugh, by the way. Uh, that's, uh, and I think that person is going to take that job. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll see, but I, I do think that, that, that is like Indianapolis. I think they're interviewing him just to pick his brain. Um, I know that's what's happening in Houston, Denver, Denver, uh, Denver people sure seem to think they're getting Jim Harbaugh. We'll see how that plays out that I'm not going into any of the Michigan side of it, but everybody in Denver seems to think that Jim Harbaugh is going to be the next head coach there. We'll see how that plays out. I don't, I, again, I don't know, but that's, but uh, do not worry about the Houston Texans. Um, they, they have their guy. Um, it's a guy that they should have hired a year ago. And that's all I'll say on that. Um, I would expect, just, the, just to, to, to finish up the, 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 the last point I'm making, I would expect that in the next week you start hearing about what about the guys that Ben Johnson might take with him <laughs> when he leaves. And, you know, what's going on with Deuce Staley? The problem with Deuce Staley is the, the the conversation is a very, very difficult one with the Rooney rule and all the other stuff associated with that. And I and 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 it's hard to have a really it's it's just so fiery and and like a lightning rod kind of conversation. A lot of people are are afraid to have it. To me, I, I mean, there's 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 in the NFL, and I'm not saying there's no, you know, there aren't racists because they 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 are everywhere. But oh, if I don't care, are. I don't care what <laughs> team you are, you will take the guy that you believe is going to get you where you want to be. I don't care if he's from Mars. 
that you will take anybody to do that. This is a performance league. And so I think the conversations around Deuce aren't going to be any like Eric Bieniemy is a guy that's that's had a lot of the conversations like that as well. I and I don't know enough about him. I haven't paid enough attention. I'm not sure. I mean, Andy Reid is really a comfy place to be working. And Eric Bieniemy may want to may do the do the rounds like he's supposed to and do the interviews, but he may just want to work with Andy until Andy's gone. And then maybe ascend to Andy's position or or take a job somewhere else. That could very well be, you know, the thinking that Ben Johnson has is I'm going to be here and I'm going to be great. And then I'm going to have all this experience and I'm going to move on. There's coaches that have absolutely failed and come back three years later and and they they shoot up and, and they get hired and they do well. Bill Belichick is one, right? He he did terribly. He was he turned not around a good coach in Cleveland. <laughs> no, he turned around and is great. So let's talk about some of the other guys. Yeah. That's that's the Ben Johnson thing, and hopefully you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. Um, but let's talk about Jim Schwartz. <laughs> he's a guy. He's getting some looks out there, isn't he, Riz? He is. Uh, he interviewed today to be the uh, the defensive coordinator for the Cleveland Browns. And I think he's a fantastic fit for that situation. Um, I still think he deserves another head coaching look. I don't get the sense that the NFL agrees with me on that. But you give him... Mr. Wide Nine, Miles Garrett, come on now. <laughs> like you're, you're looking at an MVP on your defense right there. And by the way, they have four, they are four deep at man cover corners, and they're all good. I don't know if Greedy Williams is going back. I kind of don't think he is. Uh, and by the way, that's a name that you should probably be familiar with as a Lions fan in free agency. But like they they nailed their third round pick in Martin Emerson. He's really good. He is a very good starting cornerback already. They Greg Newsom, their first rounder from two years ago, is very good. He's better than Jeff Okuda. He's better than Jerry right now. They got Denzel Ward. When he's on the field, he's one of the five best cornerbacks in the league. That's exactly the type of defense that Jim Schwartz would be a perfect fit for. So I hope he gets that job. I've been led to believe that he's not going to get it, but who knows? That owner, again, that, that's an owner who drafted Johnny Manziel because a homeless guy told him. That is 1,000% a true story, by the way. <laughs> so you never know what's going on in the in the mind of Jimmy Haslam. And that's, uh, but he's getting looks, and I, I'm happy for that. Uh, I, I, I personally like Jim Schwartz. Yeah. He certainly has his shortcomings, and – personality quirks that are absolutely not going to be for everybody but to, to go cleveland for a second their head coach is nothing like dan campbell and i think he needs somebody in that organization who's like hey bob why are we doing this and he's been surrounded by yes men and it's not working for kevin stefanski anymore mm -hmm. and he's in real danger and i i think that having an acerbic confident person like jim schwartz Rotting him in the ass a little bit is probably the best thing that could happen to both Stefanski and that organization, aside from the fact that I think he makes that defense a terror overnight. Mm -hmm. I hope he gets it. I, I don't think he's getting it, but I hope he gets it. Yeah. I, I think, and I don't want to, I'm not, I don't want to diminish anything about Jim Schwartz because I really, really like him as well. I think a little bit of, you know, when people look around at what the new thing is and what's working, you know, McVay. If you if you knew McVay's cousin, you had a head coaching job in the NFL there, right? There's it's a kind of follow-on league. I think that Coach Campbell brings a lot. They're like, you know what, there's a little bit of nuttiness there, but that passion and what he has brings something. And I think that helps a guy like Jim Schwartz. You know what I mean? It helps a guy like that yeah. who has that fire. And it's like, maybe that's what we're missing as a team, that kind of fire and that mind and that defensive mind that he has is, you know, and I can see you talking yourself. He's, in he's a brilliant defensive coordinator. Oh God. Yeah. Brilliant. Is. Yep. 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 <laughs> he so, will tell you that too. And that's one of the reasons why he's not always universally liked. That's <laughs> it's, He's, he's very sure of himself. Um, all right. So let's yes, go. Yes, uh, there's is. Jim Caldwell is got a little bit of talk going on. Jim Caldwell interviewed in Houston already. Uh, he interviewed in Carol. No, he interviewed in Carolina. He's interviewing in Houston. Uh, and by the way, the, to the idiot who commented that it's a Rooney Rule interview, their interim coach is Steve Wilkes, a black man, who interviewed first for the job. 
Like they're not. You're He's not, getting the job. He's getting stop. the job. He's getting stop. the job. Wilkes is getting the job. Steve, but, I, I really, I really hope Steve Wilkes gets that job. We yep. saw firsthand how good he made that team. And yep. The team was lost. They were lost, adrift in the desert with no camel in sight. And he made them a formidable team going down the stretch. We saw that they victimized the hell out of us. That was that was our one blip down the stretch. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, you know I talked about Steve Wilkes last week enough on that, but I I hope he gets it. But that was not a token interview for Jim Caldwell. Like they, yeah. at the very least, they want it. They want his one of the thing. One of the reasons why guys like him. Um, and I'm speaking as a seasoned ex-coach here. It's one of the reasons why a, why Rex Ryan got interviews for a long time, why Brian Billick got interviews for a long time, even though he had no intention of being a coach again. They want to pick their brain on how their team is perceived. Yep. Like, what do you see from our team? What would you do with our team? And it's yeah, free yeah. advice. Like, it, it, yep. I don't have to pay him a consultation. I can, I can bring this guy in here to the guys who are interviewing him for the head coaching position when I'm really interviewing him about what, What's going on with my team? What's his ideas on my team? That happens a lot in the NFL. A lot. That's something, if you know Pat Kerwin, and if you listen to Sirius XM NFL Radio, Pat is a huge... <laughs> Pat does a lot of things. Senior Bowl, huge. Pat. <laughs> um, Pat. But Pat stresses that all the time. Um, and you know, that's, that's, that is probably more at play with with Caldwell there than, than any other reason. But I'm glad that he's getting out and getting looks again because first off, it means that he's healthy. He left that Dolphins job, remember? Yeah, he had some was, yep. a fairly serious health scare. Um, yep. And that was that was 2019, I think. Yeah. Uh, so it's great that he's healthy and back out there. He's He is 67 years old. He doesn't necessarily fit the mold of the aggressive, young molder of talent. And again, like we talked about before, um, and this – this never got held against him when he was in Detroit, but now that he's gone, I hope more people see it. His strict aversion to developing te- – he did not want to waste time teaching young players new tricks. Yeah. That, that was not Jim Caldwell at all. Yeah. Um, and he, his hiring reflected that. Um, who he hired as coordinators and position coaches reflected that. Thanks. And I think that's going to be a strike that's held against him going forward. Yep, yep. Okay, so I want to uh, – we'll We'll get to this. There's a Ben Johnson question floating. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, and this is, it's going to be one for you, Riz. But I do want to cover Aaron Glenn getting looks as well. Yeah. Yeah. He deserves it. He, and yeah. so he is, he's Indianapolis, right? Is, yes. is, is yeah, that Indy. right? Yep. Okay. And he, remember, he interviewed there last time they had a head coaching opening. Yeah. He interviewed last year with, or he interviewed with the Jets when they hired Robert Sala. He did interview in Denver last year for their head coaching job. And this is where my little spiel about being a great coordinator does not mean you're going to be a great head coach. Being a bad coordinator does not mean you're going to be a bad head coach. Yep. Aaron Glenn has the mentality where I think he is a better head coach than he will be a defensive coordinator. He will be a better head coach than he was a defensive coordinator because I think that's his I think his mindset is that way. I think his style lends itself more to being in charge of more than more micro-focused. I think he thinks too much, quite frankly, as a defensive coordinator. I think he outsmarts himself sometimes. He's a very, very bright guy. And I think he gets – he's another guy that probably needs somebody to be pushing him back, pushing back against him a little bit. And I think you saw – and, Chris, we talked about this. One of the reasons why they rose up at the end of the year was that Dan started paying more attention to his defense because the offense was good. And I think Dan pushing back against Aaron made Glenn like see things like broader and it helped. And we saw a different Aaron Glenn in in the second half of the season. We saw a different, significantly better, a top 10 defense in that eight and two stretch. I think, I don't know if he's getting a job. I'll say that right up front. I hope he does. Because I do think it would be better served. And I do think that the Lions have people in house multiple people in-house who can take over that job without a significant decline in performance from what we saw at the end of the season. And uh, so I, I'm rooting for him to get one because uh, I, I like the guy. I like the guy a lot. Yeah. I think he's going to be a good head coach. And that's one of the things I saw through the chat a little bit earlier that, uh, you know, good teams lose coaches a lot. That's absolutely true. 
And I think we're as as Lions fans, we're going to be in a, in a position where we're going to lose good players. We're going to let good players go, and it's going to happen with coaches as well. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. I mean, the, it, during that's a Super sign Bowl, that you're good. <laughs> there's, during the Super Bowl <laughs> dynasty in New England, they lost um, McDaniel's, and they ke- they kept they on chugging. They, yeah, they lost everybody, and they kept on chugging. And, and and they all came back and they kept on chugging until Patricia came back. But the, I think I think <laughs> there's there's a lot to be said about that, and that's okay. It's it's just who you are, and when you're good, that's that's one of the things that happens. Um, I want to get to the topic, the question that it was asked about uh, Ben Johnson, Jeff, and it was it was from one of your tweets about play calling duties, um, about splitting the duties, and 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 no one had heard that before. So no that heard that, that got before. that that was phrased poorly on my part. It was certainly not split. But Dan absolutely had input on the play calling in situations. Um, ben Ben was the architect of the offense. He called the vast majority of the plays. But there were times where Dan wanted some control over it, as a head coach should, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, so I was, I phrased that tweet very poorly. Um, it, I didn't come out in my fingers the way it sounded in my head, and that that's my bad. But it, the it, bullshit. It, yeah, he, uh, yeah, pretty much. He was very, he was very much the play, the primary play caller for the team, and it's like, like way, well beyond ninety percent. Mm-hmm. But he was not the exclusive play caller, and I think, and that that is what I omitted from that. Yeah, I, I think that, I hope that I, explained that as well. Yeah, I think what you that, see, that was a flaw on my part, one hundred percent. What you see in that coaching staff is the from top to bottom, right? I mean, we go back to, but who's in charge? Who's in charge? No one's in charge. That means Rod Wood is making Rod Wood's in decisions. charge. Oh my goodness! Oh God, the idiots, the idiots. Uh, but anyway, the 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 reality of this this thing is is they run the whole team that way, top to bottom. And this offense was created by Ben and by uh, Dan who is no meathead when it comes to X's and O's and by Jared Goff together. So, and it's done that way on purpose because good teams lose coaches. And so what do you do? Do you bet everything on Ben Johnson and his photographic memory and let him lead loot, let him get, get out the door? No, no, you, you put the right people in place so that you, you, you understand why what he's doing. Now you may, you lose his talent, but you bring somebody else in who has a different bend, and it doesn't mean there's a, aren't other smart people, and there aren't other good people, and there aren't other people that are worse. But as a team and as a group, when you work in that kind of a situation, you can you can recover from these kinds of things, and it's especially if you're honest and authentic, you 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 work together much much better when people are allowed. And and we saw in Hard Knocks when they went through the evaluation of the players, the whole team worked this way. I'm telling you guys. Um, when they had the scouts, like the lowest level scouts, give their opinions on 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 uh, on the players and what was going on and where they were, and the coaches, the lowest level coaches and staffers giving their opinions on players, and they worked their way up until you got to the coordinators giving their feedback. Why? Well, number one, those lower level guys got a chance to give information to the guy the, to the the real decision makers. Let's be honest in the room that they may not have seen, but it also gives the upper level people an opportunity to evaluate and coach and help those lower people get better. And if they say, Oh, I saw this, well, maybe it's part of something else. They're going to learn by having to go through that process of preparing their feedback and their evaluations. They're going to learn rather than suddenly being in a job and and, and having to do it for the first time, which Aileen not having call sheets was something that was really, really interesting, but we'll not talk about that. So these younger guys got a chance and they, they came, they got to do their thing, and then it worked its way up, and then the coordinators, and then Campbell, and Holmes listened to all of them. And what happens? Well, if one guy up the chain is gone, you have somebody down below who's done this before, and you can evaluate from this cadre of people, and you can promote internally. I think I, I think there's a lot of that, top to bottom in the organization, and how they built the offense, and how they built the defense, and all those pieces. That's how this team is run. There's not one you know, keystone holding this thing together. There's some really important pieces, Campbell, but Campbell and Goff, the way they play off of each other is part of that chemistry. Both of them are needed. It's not one guy, right? I just, I just think that I'm, I don't want to say I'm not worried because Ben is an absolute brilliant mind. I'm just telling you, Ben's not going anywhere this year. I've told you guys from, for a while, 
he will be going eventually, I think. And and I and I don't like that. But it, 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 the only reason it is is because somebody is going to back up, not a Brinks truck, but Fort Knox, and steal him. That's what it's going to take. And when it does, it's going to take a gash out of our coaching staff. I guarantee it. The one let me, wonderful let me, thing we have with me, Ben – sorry, one last point. The one wonderful thing we have with Ben is the biggest parts of his growth and, and career are here, and his network isn't quite big enough, I don't think, to be able to go put him in that role yet. Go ahead, Riz. I don't disagree with that. Let me just cycle back to golf for a second. Do you still believe in Jared Goff being the guy if Ben Johnson is not the offensive coordinator? That, that and I'm was... not just asking you that. Mm-hmm. I'm asking the world that. Are you that trusting in Jared Goff and what you've seen from him over the last five years that he can be the guy he was this year at the end of the season where he was legitimately one of the best quarterbacks in the league? if Ben Johnson isn't calling those plays and designing those plays for him? Or would you rather have a backup plan in place for a guy who can maybe be less scheme dependent? That's my argument. That adds to my personal position and argument Mm -hmm. on why you take a quarterback this year. Because then you've got that guy and you've got got some experience for him. I know you go the other way that you'll you'll say that the new guy needs to get his guy in. Um, I would just say that I think that Dan will find the guy who wants that. And if it's internal and you and I, I think have a pretty good idea of who would wind up internally, even after Ben does things, whether he takes Dan or not, that that person would also have a lot of input on this draft process and whether they like the quarterback or not. That's that's, and I'm going to hammer that. And and that's, that's going to be my snarky reply is, Okay, that's great. You told me that Jared Goff and Ben Johnson are together. That's great. Ben Johnson leaves. How do you feel about Jared Goff? Do you really, really feel that strongly about Jared Goff? Because if the you do, question. more power to you. I don't. I don't. And I will not get to that point either. The next Sorry. question is how involved is Captain Campbell? Right. <laughs> I think he is a lot, yeah. actually. Yeah. So, so does I think that temper. Probably more, than the, probably more than the people that Trump – trumpet Ben Johnson and more than we do even. And we obviously like, and I, I think Dan's more involved in the success of this team than a lot of people would like to give him credit for quite right. honestly, right. Right. At, at a lot of different levels and the quarterback would be included in that. Yep. All right. I don't um, agree with that at all. Good question. Why would the NFL evolve away from a dual threat towards a single threat? Because defenses take away the, the dual threat. That's why all those things evolve and because you, they, you they will have... see more of that. You're going to see more of the five two front mm-hmm. that certain teams. Uh, so to go, so I put an article up at at Browns or uh, uh, Lions Wire today. The number one team in run defense against quarterbacks was the Cleveland Browns. They fired their defensive coordinator. They ran a lot of four one six defense. That's having more speed on the field, more spy potential to take out. And, and by the way, when that one linebacker before he got hurt was Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, who can freaking fly. Uh, they were great against that. The Lions were the worst. Now, some of that's a function of who they played. They they gave up 700 yards on 100 quarterback runs. Only Chicago allowed more quarterback runs, and they had barely half the yards allowed. Why is that? Because the Lions focus on, they don't have the, well, first of all, they don't have the the discipline for it. Their linebackers are not the type of linebackers that you necessarily want to be defending against mobile quarterbacks. Rodrigo's a good player. He's limited. He's not a quarterback spy. It's not who he is. Uh, the, The rotating cast at safety, especially once Tracy went out, that shifted things up. I think Deshaun got better at it, but that's not where they're at. Um, and how do you do that? You get faster your back end and you get your more disciplined guys on the front end. I think the, the front end, I think we saw guys like Pascal and Hutchinson and Bugs get better against mm-hmm. what when they played a mobile quarterback. Yep. Uh, Sam Darnold excluded. Um, that game's just... What the hell happened in that game, Chris? <laughs> Don't get good with that. <laughs> um, but that, there, there are... The evolution is going to be more of having, like when you're playing Philadelphia, when you're playing 
Bolts, by the way, was the, the, the genesis for why Cleveland did that, because they knew they had to get better than Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. Uh, and by the way, Joe Burrow can run pretty well, too. Uh, that That is why they moved to that, and it was very effective for them. Did it make them a good defense? Hell no, it did not. That's one of the reasons why they're interviewing Jim Schwartz. The Lions are at the back side of that, and some of this is still the legacy players that are left. Very few of them are there, but from the the, uh, the Patricia era, the Patriots are not good at defending mobile quarterbacks. That When you've got bigger, more linebackers on the field, it makes you that much worse at defending quarterback runs. You need more, better tackling defensive backs on the field, and you need better defensive front to stop him from getting freedom, to stop giving up passing or takeoff lanes. That's something that the Lions have to work on. That is more of a schematic issue and and also just the fact that they played a shit ton of – they played the top four running quarterbacks this year at total uh, that that's not going to happen again next year. I mean, obviously Fields is still going to be dangerous, but and I guess they do technically draw Seattle, and I think Geno think Gino will be back next year. Just to go back to the golf thing, I will I will I won't guarantee it, but I will say I will be very very surprised if Geno Smith is not back in Seattle, and also they don't use one of their first round picks on a quarterback. That's that's that is nuts to me. Way more nuts. Than the idea of not using a first round pick on a quarterback and keeping golf. I'm telling you. I'm telling you that is way I, more nuts that that Seattle idea. That that's that that's just where if you again it, because you have to you have to bet against Geno Smith not being the Geno Smith he was in 2023 yep. or 2022 because he hasn't been that guy before. That's the exact same argument with golf that I have. Mm-hmm. Um not that I expect golf to fall off, just as I don't expect Geno to fall off all that much, but and even just a little bit of regression, you've got to open up the potential that when, when Brad Holmes says that the quarterback can get worse, that that includes your current quarterback. And I think people are shying away from that because he was brilliant down the stretch. As a team manager and as a team builder, I have to have insurance against that. That's yeah. not to go back to do that again. But that's when, when I'm saying this and people are going to say, oh, we're just going to get Jared Goff, I want Jared Goff as the starting quarterback of the Detroit Lions in 2023 because, again, nobody they can get anywhere is going to be better for this team than Jared Goff is, yep. especially if Ben Johnson is still here. And I, I believe you that Ben Johnson will be here. Yep. But beyond that, I want that guy in-house. I want him learning the system. I want him learning the chemistry with the receivers. I want him understanding what being a Detroit Lion is all about. And I want them to pick a guy that's like that. They're not going to draft a guy, a guy that high just to draft him. They're going to draft him because they believe that it, they believe that he is going to be a very good football player in Detroit. Yep. And exactly. I, I don't think that's a wasted pick at all. I think that's one of the smartest if, investments they can make in this. So, in and this, this is the thing, and I'm gonna. This is the one thing that I that I'm gonna go to that point. If they have his guy, and people say, well, if if, if you know, I just saying, if Brad's guy is there, then you have to take him. If he doesn't take anyone, his guy isn't there. So shut up then. Right. right. If, if right. you don't yes, have a 100%. guy, if yeah. you don't have a guy and you say, I just wanted to say if they if their guy is there and they take if they don't take anyone, their guy isn't there. So stop saying they should take a quarterback. Right. right? It's over. Their guy wasn't there. And that's what no, you said. You, they you, take. Can't, you, you can't you can't draft one just to draft one. But that's that's, that's where people ride this this line. They say, We need a quarterback in the first it's not golf. It can't be golf. Oh yeah, well, who is it? Well, it's not my job. I just want if their guy is there, I want him to take their guy. Cool. Then you say you trust them, and if they don't take somebody, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Either you have a guide, you stand behind it, or you believe in them, and they're doing their thing. There's not an in between, right? You don't get to play both sides of that fence. And I see so many people doing that. Do the that. cop yeah. out of, oh, I just want them to take their guy, and then they complain that they, he didn't take a guy, right? And then they have the benefit of hindsight, right? Like that's why I love beating up on the Malik thing, right? Because not because any bad people liked Malik or anything like that, but. Everyone was like, take him he was at two. So and he went literally he went not their guy. So late. And then now you think about how bad it was. If we would have put him at two, his perceived value would have been second overall, right? I was here for Charlie Batch. I was here in those days when people were screaming to put Batch on the field, right? When we had our developmental guy on the field. And you see the TED talk now, like with the, the whole thing and how they mishandled that whole situation and the whole thing. It's crazy. Oh I was God. here for that. I saw it unfold. Yeah. 
Oh my God. Okay. Let's get into draft because we're running a little bit out of time here. Riz, you've got some stuff yeah, coming yeah. up here that we got to do. That's why we started a little bit earlier. Now we're going to run to full time. Um, draft really quick. The Rams, uh, they drafted a sixth, isn't it? Rams are at six. Yes. So that means the number Lions six. get a number six overall pick and number 18. Um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say this again. I said this ages ago before the season and before the last draft. Goff will either win enough to be the guy or if he doesn't, you have the ammo to replace him. <laughs> it's true. It's true next year too. You I always have they, the I, ammo. I don't think they'll have the I don't think they'll have that kind of ammo because then you're getting no. into okay, we got to start paying so we got to start paying Panay. We got to pay Decker again if we the, want it. We like that no, you're you can, running you into a go financial get window. You trade you, you you trade picks because you've got your team and you're you're paying your guys. I'm telling you, they can they can do it. The Rams did it. I don't think that's, they're going that's, to that's need what the Rams to. just did. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And they got a Super Bowl out of it. And I think it's they different did. in Detroit. Great, Detroit would still yeah. be celebrating even if they were landed with the Rams. Did the next year, so Detroit wouldn't care because they got their Super Bowl. It was worth it. They, well, people yeah. in Detroit would take ten hell years yeah. in, in hell just for one Super Bowl. If you tell me all in for one, yeah, yeah, give me that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, that's why, again, you've got a great offensive unit you're building around. You build your defense up. Get it to number if you, get it to number ten, right? I'll pick a number out of my ass if you can with all of your picks this year, and then spend the next fifty three years. I don't care. I'm obviously being exaggerated, exaggeratory here, but spend your next fifty three first round picks and get your guy and go win the Super Bowl. Period. Right. I mean, that's that's I, I'm not worried about being able to get your guy when you need to, because you'll always have the ability to do that as long as you don't shoot your sh yourself in the foot with how it's your first. And Brad, Brad Holmes isn't going to do that. So that's that. Thing. I agree. But I, I just I, yeah, um, draft. So six. Let, let, let's just rule out two players that will not be there. Bryce Young will not be there. Will Anderson will not be there. I think yep. everybody else has the potential to be there. Uh, I, I think those are the first two picks, regardless of who's picking, especially if the teams that are there now are picking. Do you think three um, quarterbacks? I will say that if Chicago, are do you think three quarterbacks are taken before number six? That's from no, Brown. I don't. I don't. I think I think Stroud is is more than likely gone. Will Levis, the the, the NFL seems to like him a hell of a lot more than merits. Like, but. <laughs> Maybe they're going to look at what Zach Wilson has become and realize that that having a big arm and a big ego isn't everything for a quarterback. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'm not a big Levis fan. I still think Will Levis has Pete Carroll written all over him, and I think he will be their first round pick that they get as a quarterback um, to go along with Geno Smith because they're they're going to do that. That's I, I have very little doubt in my mind that that's going to happen. Um, then you're looking at Jalen Carter, who declared today. Yeah. Don't know where he's going to go yet. Mocked very high. How do you think he did in the in the in the finals in that in that last in that last game? I mean, it's such a hard game to evaluate. So I did. I, I fell asleep. Oh, yeah. yeah. I fell asleep in that game, so uh, I'm not going to say that I I watched that one uh, against Ohio State. You would not know that he was on the field. Yeah. And you wind up in the same uh, spot you did with Hutch, who got shut down against Ohio State, right? And you're like, and then it was like, oh, Hutch can't do it, Hutch can't. And then here he is in the running for defensive rookie yeah. of the year. I will Jaylen say Carter, Jalen Carter, having, Carter having six sacks in two seasons, and obviously the context is, is that Georgia, Georgia had a freaking loaded defense both years, and he didn't have to. You're looking more at a Derek Brown level of player than an Endomic and Sue level of player in terms of what they've produced and what they've shown you they can do. But the thing with Carter is you're betting that he's going to become that much better at rushing the passer and collapsing the pocket because he's an incredible super freak of an athlete and he's nasty and he wants it. And that's, he, he is, if Panay Sewell played defensive tackle, He's Jalen Carter, that yeah. kind of mindset, that kind of attitude. And I like that a lot. He will Thank be the you. number one player on my board. I don't know how the NFL is going to value him, though. And keep in mind, he's also had Positionally. missed two games last year with an injury. He he was not good in the first half of that year because he was coming off an injury that lingered a long time. See Frank Ragnall in the toe. And had an injury in his freshman year as well. And that's something you're going to have to check out. Um, Brian Brees. Uh, of uh, Clemson 
you're going to see a crap ton of mocked to the Lions. I don't know on him yet. Like he's he's really good. another another super freak athlete, but there are some caveats with him, and I don't think that the NFL is going to value him at six. I think if he's there at eighteen, he's, he's certainly in play. There are cornerbacks, offensive linemen. There are Quentin Johnson from TCU as a wide receiver is going to be that highly regarded. There's going to be a lot of different options there, and we're going to be going through those over the next three months, so we don't need to get into all that now. And Scott Bischoff's going to help us go through all this crap. Um, and you're going to be seeing a lot more of Scott on these these airwaves, independent of us and with us, and that's going to be great. Uh, yeah. I can't wait to get more with Scott. But uh, that, we, we got a lot of time to talk about that. But um, the only two players that I would say have no chance of being there are Will Anderson and Bryce Young. Yeah. Everybody else is fair play. Yeah. There you go. All right. And first, first mock off season that I do at Lions Wire will be up Saturday morning. And please don't have a heart attack over the mock because mocks come out for different reasons. And they're often thought exercises and they drive discussion and thought about, oh, well, there's something I hadn't I hadn't contemplated. Uh, I had that actually at work today. Somebody was bringing in, they brought in uh, a, a potential partner to do some some stuff for us. And I'm like, I, I can see where this would work in this other spot. I have no idea. And all of a sudden, the guy, he, he we were talking to teams in the background. He hit me with a, about a six-word sentence, sentence. I was like, oh, my God, how did that fly right past me? I had no, I had never thought of that before. Holy, yeah, absolutely. This makes perfect sense. And then, boom. Take it for what they are. Take the thought exercise. Let run with it and be, and let the creativity That's flow. Exactly you can say what it doesn't work, but ah, don't freak out. Don't freak I, out. And I will I will write some. Way. By the way, not this this first one will not be that, but I will write several mock off seasons that I would be scared to death that they would do. I don't absolutely won't want them. That's mm-hmm. sort of just where I'm at. I I like to, I like to play the different scenarios, man. That's you know choose your own adventure books. I, I, I still love those. I still read those. My kids have some. I still read them. 50 years old like I, I love that kind of stuff like going down the different paths and rabbit holes and i'm fortunate that i have the, the opportunity to explore that and and if you know me at all you know i have a very weird creative mind that i'm not afraid to let go and i will like i, I i'm gonna put some out there that, that people are gonna be like what the bleep man what the hell is wrong with you and i will feel the same way writing it but i i'm gonna put it out there just just so people think about it um and you know, they are pro, they are designed to be provocative without designed to being clickbait. And I think that's a, a there's a difference between those. There are some that we're going to put out mocks just so they can get clicks on it. I will never do that, um, and, and my editors know that. My bosses know that. Uh, when I do these, I have a lot of fun with them. I try to explore different venues, and that's that's why they're done. That's why you should be doing mock drafts too, just to think about the different ideas that are out there. Um, don't be afraid of them. Yep. 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 All right. Um, so we'll talk about that really quick, Riz. Uh, pending free agents. Let's hit that really quick, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll yeah. do our thing. Yeah. So there are 18. Um, there are not 17, as I initially wrote, because they categorized GJ Shark as a void contract in a UFA. And the filter that I did, and I screwed that up, I added him in later. Um, the big ones, Jamal, Evan Brown, Shark, Shark, well, I, I always say shark. It's shark. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, uh, Alex Anzalone, Will Harris, uh, Isaiah Bugs. Uh, who's the other one that's somewhat important? Uh, Oruwarie is one. I don't expect him back, and I don't expect the Lions to make a big effort to keep him. Uh, no. There's one other one, and I'm blanking on it. Um, n- nobody else that played a lot is oh, – oh, Deshaun Elliott. Deshaun Elliott's yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if Brian Duker is still here, Deshaun Elliott will still be here. I feel very comfortable in saying that. Mm, interesting. Okay. Very All right. There's some ke- ke- uh, keepers. Um, the the club, Kaminsky, um, definitely a guy. Oh, yeah. Kaminsky, Kaminsky, he begged to come back. Uh, if you saw the Instagram post, um, it would be stunning. If he's not back, I don't have inside information on that one, but I, no, I would a, be stunned he, if he's not back. He's like a Brockers role, right? He is now that yeah. that 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 Brockers will leadership. not be back. By the way, they're yeah. they're gonna they're gonna end that. But he was veteran leadership. And, and Ka- Kaminsky brings and, and that same did, kind of juice. He did. Yeah, 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 one hundred percent. And that's 
Kaminsky is the kind of guy who will turn down triple salary elsewhere to stay in Detroit because he, he's been elsewhere and he knows what is out there and what isn't out there. So yeah. I, I yeah. absolutely 100% expect him back. I don't know that he'll be back, but I would be very, very surprised if he's back. Yeah, and Detroit fan, man, I'm talking about from a leadership perspective. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that um, he's taking the Brockers' role on the, on the defense. I'm just saying as a, as a, as a leader, he's taking right. the leader, role. Michael Brockers was only a leadership presence on the team. He did not yeah. play, yeah. Uh, and they're not going to pay for that again. Yep. Or should they? And by the way, Brockers is smart enough to understand that. Yeah. yeah. It, it won't be. It won't be an acrimonious part. Departure. No. He. He. And he may. He may take the retirement and roll in as an intern and and start his head his coaching uh, he career could, here. Let, I mean, let's just say that if there's some changes to the defensive staff, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Michael Brockers is on the defensive coaching staff next yep. year in Detroit. Yep, absolutely, and, absolutely. And I'd be okay with that. <laughs> we anticipated Brandon yep. just as well as Brad Holmes anticipates the market. Um, hey, are you going to the Freemasons um, outdoor barbecue in Ishpeming this weekend? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, I'll miss you. All right, uh, with that, hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate you for that. We've got a lot of stuff that's going to be breaking with no real notice. We're going to come online and live with it. Uh, so check that out. Also, don't forget about cbd.detroitlionspodcast.com pain anxiety sleeplessness uh also known as an insomnia uh cbd is a great way to do oh, it the delta eight gummies the delta eight gummies take you for the ride that you need don't operate heavy machinery cbd.detroitlionspodcast.com also amazon.detroitlionspodcast and fanatics.detroitlionspodcast hit those for uh fanatics for all of your your merch needs uh especially you know tattoo that one on your arm ahead of the draft because you're going to want to be picking up some some cool jerseys there as well uh amazon anytime you go to amazon do amazon.detroitlionspodcast.com thank you all for joining us remember don't forget about us on the patreon patreon.com slash detroit lions podcast if you donate as little as five dollars a month you'll get access to the slack slack will hear about where in this show I threw out red herrings because I threw out red herrings and used names that I knew were wrong because I can't give up my... So Slack is the place to go. You get the inside scoop. Riz, myself, Bischoff, Case, um, Ash, uh, Sandman. We're all there and, and, and hundreds of other people hanging out. The most intelligent Lions chat on the internet. Uh, really great people, great community. I've not been part of any other community. I think that's one of the best things that's come out of doing this podcast is that group of people. I mean, they're... They're the family you choose, man. Some really good folks. So uh, if you want to get involved in that, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast and uh, kick off a $5 a month or more donation. Also at Twitter, you have at Jeff Risden and at DET Lions podcast, DET Lions podcast, the best place to see either of us hanging pants free. And give us a call on Skype, Detroit Lions podcast, all one word, Detroit Lions podcast, or call us in the Lions line at 248-782-8384 or 248-RUB-U-FUG. <laughs> I love that. Uh, be sure to go to DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Subscribe to the podcast. Give them what for. So I can come into your ear holes automatically. Who wouldn't want that? <laughs> woo, 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 woo. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. We're going to see you next time on the Detroit Lions Podcast. Remember, no pants, no toasters, no hot tubs, no problems. And no worries about Ben Johnson. I promise. Because we're your Detroit Lions and Reddit Connection. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.